we are here this morning i believe there is a season that god is rolling in this place you understand god is a god of seasons there is a season that god is rolling in this place because the theme of the season speaks for itself there is no way we can talk about experiencing god and remain the same and remember that the bible does not allow us to remain in the same place that's why the bible says we move from one level of glory to another so i believe there's something that god is going to do in this service it's going to provoke us it's going to launch us into higher dimensions allow me to say at this point in time all protocol observed let's get into the reading of the word give me matthew chapter number four remain standing with me matthew chapter number four just for the reading of the word just as we honor president as they walk in let's honor the reading of the word that's our culture it's, i know it might be new to you but just bear with me just for a few minutes it's only about three or so verses that we are going to read matthew chapter number four verse number 12 through to 17 we are going to read even from an english standard version there we go are you ready for the reading of the word we take off now when the when he heard that john had been arrested he withdrew into galilee and leaving nazareth he went and lived in capernaum by the sea in the territory of zebulun and naphtali so that what was spoken by the prophet isaiah might be fulfilled the land of zebulun and the land of naphtali the way of the sea beyond the jordan galilee of the gentiles verse number 16 this is the key text the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light and for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death on them a light has dawned the last verse from that time jesus began to preach saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand before you sit down the series theme like pastor martin had been preaching last week i was following through experiencing god and i and i got this right he said i might be preaching this up until december I've been preaching this message experiencing God encountering God from last year many places it's actually a very long series you cannot exhaust it and once you talk about experiencing God let me speak this and warn you you will come into this place one of these services and you will fail to do the protocols Am I communicating? So don't get surprised. It will happen. I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to be ministering unto you for the next 40 minutes or so on a sub title An Encounter with a Great Light. An Encounter with a Great Light. Not an ordinary light not a simple light but a great light right we can take our seats in the presence of the lord thank you so i will try to keep my discipline if you don't mind uh i do normally minister with some something on the background you just take it low and uh, uh just take it lower a little bit lower a little bit lower a little yes if you can give me i love i love i love your presence just check it low a little bit 
Are you ready now? So I, I, I speak quite a lot. So I'll try to maintain my discipline by just remain standing here where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Because many, many times I preach and I go into the people, then I miss out on a lot of things. Oh, yes. So now I, I believe that this series is directed at trying to revive personal encounters in the body of Christ. Personal encounters. Remember, the encounter of a person sitting next to you can only help you to a certain level. But a personal encounter will take you all the way. There are times when you need to experience your own. You need your own experience. You can come to church and hear a testimony, but it will take you somewhere. But a personal encounter, a personal experience will take you somewhere and all the way. So I believe this series is directed at trying to revive personal encounters in the body of Christ, reviving personal encounters. It is also directed at creating an environment. So an environment will be created where people can encounter the manifest presence of God and underline manifest presence of God. I will explain that later. Now you see, you see, we all believe that God is omnipresent, which means he is everywhere. But understand that he is not active everywhere. Mark that. He is present, omnipresent everywhere, but he is not active everywhere. So when we are talking about this, we, we, we are saying the experience does not come from the omnipresent. It comes from the Shekinah glory. The original word for Shekinah, it means the manifest presence of God or the revealed presence of God. So, so, may God help us this morning. So, I've realized that a believer without a personal encounter cannot go as far as required. If I'm allowed to say, oh, I don't try to be offensive, a believer without an experience is like a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow cannot go anywhere further without someone pushing it. So you cannot go further when it comes to worship when you don't have something driving you from inside. You can't do it at home. You can't worship at home because there is no service coordinator to provoke you, to motivate you. There is no worship team to do that for you. But a personal encounter will drive you. It's something from within. So, so let me outline a few things as I move on into the main message now. There are types of various kinds of encounters. You will see, I will just mention a few. So this list does not exhaust it all. Number one, there are what we call voice encounters. A voice experience. One of these days, you will hear a voice or you might have had a voice which is different from the voices that you have had. A voice that you cannot disobey. A voice that does not fade away. A voice that you will never forget. A voice that will provoke you into action. Mm -hmm. So they are what we call voice encounters. Number two, they are what we call power encounters. You experience the power of God. You encounter the power of God. And, and, and whenever you have these experiences, there is something that you do that you have never done. 
there is what we call wealth encounters. How many, how many, how many love this one, the wealth encounter? I love this one. I, do, I see a lot of people, they don't like it. I like, I like it. I know where I'm coming from, so I like wealth encounters. They are what we call vision encounters. Vision encounters. You have a vision or a dream. You don't forget that dream. You don't forget that encounter. So let me, let me end there, but let me say this. Let's move on now. Let's move on now. The engine is getting ready now. So look at this. These encounters must not be limited to us believers. These experiences and encounters, they must be extended to our neighbors, to unbelievers. Let me show you. Let me show you. Even the enemies of believers, the enemies of the church, at some point in time, they must have an experience of the God whom we save. Mm -hmm. We are getting there now. Where am I getting this? Acts chapter number 9, it's a reference scripture. You realize the Bible says, so of Tarsus was breathing threats, threatening the church, going around with letters arresting believers. So God was manifesting himself in the church. But the church was being persecuted by an unbeliever. So God left the church and so on his way to Damascus, he had an encounter. You see, this is an enemy of the church. Do you know that there are people whom we are not going to convince to come to this church? They only need an encounter regardless of how hard their hearts are and their minds and arrogant they are but there is an encounter that breaks every arrogance there is an encounter that breaks every resistance there is an encounter that will uh, that will change the mind of your persecutor now look at this the bible says in Acts chapter number nine so he had an encounter with the lord two things there was a voice and there was a light. He says the light was brighter than the light, the normal light, which I'm going to speak about in a moment. So, so don't limit these encounters to believers. I'm believing for encounters. God will encounter government officials, people who are in position of authority. You have tried to advise them. You have tried to write to them, but they have refused. But there is an encounter that will cause them to bow down. There is an experience that God, that's going to happen in their lives that will, will cause them to change decrees. It will cause them to change around or turn around and say good things that benefits the change. So I'm believing God in this season for such encounters, not only in the church. Let me prove it right in the scriptures again. People who occupy higher positions, if we have time, we'll go to Esther chapter number 6. King Ahasuerus, he had an encounter. A decree was made. The people of God were supposed to be destroyed. It took an encounter. <laughs> it only took one encounter for the decree to be reversed. Let the people who sit in positions of authority, even as we decree and declare from this altar, let those people have an experience. Decrees are going to be reversed. Oh my God. Now, 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 now let me prove it right again. You see, you see, these experiences, they will be extended to your destiny connectors or destiny helpers. How is it going to happen? Acts chapter number 10, Cornelius was yearning for help. But the guy who was supposed to come to help them, Peter, didn't believe in preaching to the Gentiles. Said, no, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. P 
Peter was convinced. He had a dream. He, had, he went into a trance, a vision. And he saw a curtain coming down with animals. Peter wouldn't have come to preach at Cornelius' place. But it took an encounter with God. An experience with God. And God told him, you know what? You cannot condemn what I have approved. So, so for Peter to go and preach at Cornelius' place, he needed an encounter. So some encounters, they are just going to come to connect you with certain people. Certain people who are going to extend their hands free of charge to carry you to the next level. Oh my God. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, light encounters, encountering the greater light. We move. Biblically, light is a symbol of number one, God's blessing. We don't have time to go into that. Biblically, the light the symbol of light is a symbol of God's blessings. Number two, it's a symbol of goodness, the goodness of God. Number three, it's a symbol of uprightness. Most importantly, it's a symbol of enlightenment, illumination, understanding, and the revelation. So when the light is switched on, these greater lights, you will not struggle to understand the spiritual principles. Principles that you used to struggle with. Principles as the body of Christ we used to argue about. The light is going to be switched on. And when that light is switched on, there is going to be great revelations. There is going to be illumination in your mind, in the inner mind. There is going to be enlightenment. So talking about the revelation, the Bible speaks in the book of Matthew, chapter number 16, verse number 15. Jesus says to Peter, he says, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven, which means things that no man can explain to us, and we get that ability to understand them. It is through an encounter with light that we get to know the secrets of God, that we get to understand those deeper principles that will take us to the next level. Someone shout, Amen. Amen. So, 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 I believe the reason I decided to start on the encounter with light, there it comes. I believe the most important encounter that the church needs or a believer needs before any other encounter, before any other experience, is to experience light. Because power encounters are dangerous without light. Ah, I will reveal this. I will reveal that. So you see, why, why, why? Everything must start from a light experience light encounter so a position of light will ensure that whatever you do is correct and is in line with the will of god it's biblical and i can prove it now in creation when you go to the book of genesis chapter number one verse number three god says before doing anything, he says, let there be light. But when you read the next verses, you realize that God created the lights in day number four. So the question is, what kind of light was God saying, let there be light? So it's a light different from the lights created in day number four, which is the sun and the moon and the stars. This is the kind of light that I'm talking about. So God could not create anything before releasing light. So everything you do must start from a light encounter. It must start from a position of illumination, position of revelation. Do you know that when you understand what you are doing, you do it in a better way? 
Oh, when you have a revelation of what you are doing, when there is an illumination in your mind of what you are doing, you do it in a much more better way. Oh my, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you lift up your hands and you have a revelation of what you are doing, you do it better and you lift them higher. Realize it was the same hands, the same hands, the hands of Moses. Uh, literally, when he was lifting them up higher, Israel was winning battles. When the hands were going down, Israel started to retreat. So there are certain things that we do in church, but we don't do them up to the specifications that God wants because we don't have enough revelation of that act. So everything that you do must start from a light position, a light encounter. Even God could not do anything. He started with light. So who are we to start from power? Huh? To start from wealth. Do you know that when you have a wealth encounter, before you have a light encounter, you get lost in that wealth. When you have a power encounter, before you have a light encounter, you abuse the power. That's why you doubt certain power. Say, is this the power of God? What, what actually is happening? They started from a power encounter instead of a light encounter. So now, let's move a little bit further now. So God started by creating, speaking the light. Speaking the light. When your service to God starts from light, you don't need to be pushed. You are excited because you have a revelation of the God whom you save. You know when we sing, bow down and worship. When you know the king, when you know this God, that he is the same God which the Bible says there are 24 elders. Ah, they do have crowns already. We don't have the crowns because the crown is a sign of graduating. They have the crowns already, but they take down the crowns, cast them aside. They forget all their achievements. They set them aside and they behave as if they have not accomplished anything. They go further because they have a revelation. They have an illumination and understanding of the God whom they save. They fall on their faces. They don't look at this suit and say, you know what? I look too smart. I cannot bow down before God. I cannot fall on my face. I cannot roll on the carpet because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very smart. But they understand that he is greater than any garment, any hairstyle, any kind of makeup. Oh my God! Ah! That's why you hear Paul says, you know what? I have seen all these things. I have seen Uticas being raised from the dead. But one thing that I do, I count everything done, worthless. But what I do, I press on. Hey, he's a great God. So when you understand how great God is, is people they think you are crazy. Because the understanding of whom you save, it drives you crazy. It, it makes you uncommon. That's why when the ark was coming back and David started to dance, started to dance, started to dance and the wife was like, what are you doing? Don't you know that you are a king? Please behave. <laughs> uh, David had an understanding of this thing called ark. To someone it was ordinary. But he had an illumination to say, when this ark is not there, there is no victory. When the ark is there, it represents the presence of God. Let me move a little bit. Move a little bit. So, so human beings understanding the importance of light. We created our own lights. We created our own lights. You see, you see, this light encounter is so old. Remember when the Israelites were walking, journeying from Egypt, going to the promised land, they had daily encounters. Two things. During the day, the cloud. 
during the night. So it, the fire will illuminate the way, which means they will walk day and night if required. So, so, so we are not going to walk in our lights, but we want to walk in the light of God. Because the Bible says in the book of Psalm, chapter number 27, verse number 1, it says, The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Oh my God. You, you move on quickly because you're running out of time. Psalm chapter number 27, verse number 1. It says, uh, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? James 1, 17. This is very important. Get this one. Every good gift and every perfect gift come from above. Coming down from the Father of lights. The father of lights, the distributor of light, light eternal, light eternal, light eternal. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. So, so, I, I want to give you 60 seconds. I want to give you 60 seconds. We are getting into the most important part. Oh, shh. 60 seconds, I want you to pray to the God of lights, the Father of lights. Lord, I want that divine light. <laughs> no, no, no. Before you do that, let me, let me help you. Someone might say, you know, I have encountered light. There are dimensions of lights. Light is like education. It's like education. Metric is a level of education. But that's not the end. <laughs> you might be at the metric dimension of light, but you need to go to the diploma, you need to go to the BA, you need to go to the owners, you need to go to the masters. So you don't come to a point where you feel like you are done with light. There are dimensions of light. I want to give you 60 seconds. I want to give you 60 seconds before I move to the next level to just say, Lord... I desire this light in this season. In whatever you are about to do in this church with this church, Lord, illuminate. I want to understand. Oh, light up my way. Light up my soul. Light up my spirit. Light up my marriage. Light up my business. Light up. Light up. Light up. Light up. Light up. Light up. Turn it into a prayer. Turn those words into a prayer. Madeka bo sabaya. Di brasonde e brikado shamaya. Laba. Kakuna manda rabadaba daba 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 daba. 50 seconds. Madeka le labona maranda. Shabrato kamande. Kepe na malabaya. La, 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 la. Encounter light, encounter greater light, encounter greater light, greater light, greater light, greater light, another level, another level, another dimension. I'll no longer walk in my light, I will walk in your light because you are my light, you are my light and my salvation. You are the father of lights. Oh, 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 light for revival. Light for revival. Shabadakaya Lababusa. Let your light shine in my life. Let your light shine in my street. Let this light shine in my neighborhood. Let this light shine in the whole of this neighborhood. Even the people next door, one day they will be making some coffee and the service is going on. The light will visit them. Someone will be walking down the street. The light will visit them. Mm. You know, I read the, I, I read the, the history of, of this church. Some other time they said in Azusa, when people were far away, they will see fire. And people will run, will call the fire engine, come and put out the fire. When they come, they will come and see people worshipping. There is a light that is going to attract people. Oh, there is a light that's going to pull people, pull your friends. My God, my God. Let's cruise a little bit. Let's cruise a little bit. 18 minutes to go. So you see now, light encounters. 
Now from where we have read, the light came to the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. So that that which was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah will be fulfilled. So the Bible said, now when Jesus heard that, I love to illustrate, don't mind. I love illustrations. One thing that I never desired to be was a teacher. But I don't know why I found myself teaching now. <laughs> Spiritual things. The Bible says when Jesus heard that John the Baptist was arrested, he departed. Imagine if Jesus was your pastor. <laughs> Jesus hears that you are sick. He goes to Deben. <laughs> you actually see him at the beach enjoying. Pastor, I'm sick. Jesus goes to you, you, you see, the relationship between Jesus and John was so strong. It came a long way when they were still in the womb. But John is the one who is supposed to announce, who actually announced the, who introduced Jesus to the world. So, naturally you would think you were supposed to run. But he departed. The Bible says he went to the region, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. Then he dwelt there. He sat there. So that that which was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah may come to pass. Then it says, Now the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, the land of darkness, has seen the light has seen a greater light. He didn't do anything. He just went there and sat there and dwelt there. Now, few things, few things concerning the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. You understand why I picked this scripture. Number one, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali was a land of darkness. As the Bible says it. And this is what happens where there is darkness. Number one, ignorance reigns when there is darkness. <laughs> Blindness reigns. Do you know when we switch off the lights here, literally, everyone will walk out. Even if when you are sitting next to Pastor Martin, you just try to make sure your, 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 your bag is safe. Your wallet is safe. It is because of darkness. <laughs> Jesus left all these other places and he went to a place of darkness. Ah, ignorant reigns where there is darkness. But when light comes in, steps in, ignorance goes away. Remember I said there are principles that we are still ignorant of. The encounters, the experience of light is going to cause us to understand. So now, this is what happens when, when in a land of darkness. So, this is ignorance removing light. We will no longer be ignorant of the principles of Jesus Christ. This is blindness removing light. Number three, where there is darkness, there is error. So this light went to take away the error. <laughs> let, me, let me reverse it a little bit. Understand. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali, the Bible says it, it was the way of the sea. So, the land of Naphtali and Zebulun was a highway of enemies when foreign armies are coming in to raid the land. So it was like the highway. So it's like when the devil wants to hit her, because you are actually in the line, he will start to hit you and hit her. 
that was the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. It was a highway. So armies will come through and pass through the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. So they actually suffered indirect destruction. So destructions that was meant for cities inside would start. It's, it's like, it's like a, a person wants to rob Pastor Martin. Then he sees you are having an iPhone, yeah. the latest. So he says, ah, oh, so let me start from here. Before I go to Pastor Martin, let me start from here. So that was the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. They suffered continuous destruction indirectly. You might be standing. You might be like a Zebulun. You are, suffer, you are suffering indirect attacks and, 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 and destruction. But the light is coming. Not only the ordinary light, but the greater light. The greater light. The greater light. So, so the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, the people dwelling there were so discouraged. Continuously, over and over again, they will suffer. Then Jesus started, decided to go there and start ministry in dark areas. You know, light is of no use without darkness. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me speak this. Light is coming to the discouraged. Light is going to clear all arguments. There are so many arguments in the body of Christ. But when everyone comes to light, we come into agreement. You see, light, sin prevails where there is darkness. <laughs> but when light comes, sin moves out. All evil works exist where there is darkness. So I'm not worried about any evil work. Let light come. Let the greater light walk in. Let the ignorant start to know certain things they didn't know. Oh my God. Let the night, let the night be dealt with. Actually, the Bible says, weeping endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. But now, now, one thing that I like about the morning that's coming is not a morning being brought by natural light. It's a morning that's brought by the greater light, eternal light. Let light come. Let light shine. Oh, my love. Oh, lastly, lastly, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali was a region of shadow of death. There was death. So where death is hovering, there is uncertainty. You might be living in uncertainty. As a country, as a continent, as a generation, we are uncertain of so many things. But when the light comes, all the uncertainties, they go away. They dissolved. They are dissolved. They are dissolved. You know, you know, the land of death, when death reigns, there is a bad smell. Thank you, Jesus. Bad smells. Sin. It's a place of sorrow. But when night comes, joy. Joy. Everything starting needs to start from a place of light. Your Christian walk must start from a place of illumination. And it must continue in those lines. Your marriage, light. In my marriage, there is darkness in your marriage, but let the light shine. In your business, let the light shine. In your relationships, let the light shine. In the church service, in my ministry, let the light shine. A place of understanding. I want you to stand with me. Shabbat alakaya. A believer that had an experience an encounter with the light, we will worship better, we will serve better. Oh, so this encounter will spread this experience. 
when you have contact with the light, your conduct changes. When you have an encounter with the light, I repeat it, your conduct will change. We were illuminated and we are still being illuminated to illuminate others. The Bible says you are the light of the the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, arise and shine for, for the light of the Lord. So we light up the world from a position of being illuminated first. Lord, illuminate us. As a couple, illuminate us. As a church, as an individual. Oh, my Lebosha, illuminate us, illuminate us, illuminate us, illuminate us. Don't give us power before we give us light. Don't give us power before we get understanding. Don't give us power before we have the revelation. Give us the revelation. Illuminate our minds. Illuminate our minds. Illuminate our minds. Oh, light makes a difference. Light makes a difference. Lord, expose me to that light. Expose me to that light. Expose me to the light that encountered Paul. Expose me to that. My God, my God. Five minutes. Look at this. Paul, arrogant as he was, ignorant he was, it was one light encounter. Bah! Now he writes the verse of the New Testament. It is light. It is because of the light that we are going to bring new ideas to this economy. Light. Oh, encounters. Encounters. I believe with all my heart that the heart, the backbone of Christian life is encounter. It is encounter, nothing else. It's not about how many verses you know. It's about how many encounters. All the men who made uh, significant contributions to the Bible, to the Christian life, are men and women of multiple encounters, multiple experience. It's a daily experience with God. The Israelites, they needed the fire by night. That's an encounter. That's an experience during the day. Daily with God multiple encounters this morning we want to yield and also allow God to encounter certain people unbelievers I was preaching in Bezvali released one of these days it was a conference night you know Bezvali is infested with drugs people will be sleeping during the service and we were preaching some guys came running into the church and they said, there is power in the streets. There is an encounter in the street. They were drunk. I know what I'm talking about. I believe there is a new season here. Yes, you have been, we are doing well. But there is a place that God is taking you to. People will dream about this change. I'm, 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 saying, I'm saying it. As I see it and as I hear it. People will have an encounter in the dreams about these services. But we want to we want to open ourselves to yield. Lord, I'm available. Lord, I'm available. Expose me to that light.